for my 50th birthday, I was pampered by my wife and four of my children and their spouses in a belated celebratory bonanza. Each day was like one of the 12 days of Christmas. Stay tuned. In this episode of Harvest, we will discuss Noah's Flood, a lesson in preparedness for today. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Genesis chapter 7 verse 1. Michael's family surprised him with activities such as hiking in Cloudland Canyon in northern Georgia. They took him to the Georgia Aquarium. They visited the Chattanooga Zoo. They walked the fossil beds at Falls of the Ohio River in southern Indiana where the Lewis and Clark expedition began. And finally they visited the Creation Museum and Ark Encounter in northern Kentucky. While I don't think my family intended it to be this way, each day we experience the majesty of God and his judgment on our sinful world in Noah's flood. It caused me to remember, God does not change. If nearly 4,000 years ago he said he would destroy the earth with water, and he did, why do we think he will not destroy it with fire, as he has said he would? As a child, I loved to listen to the LP recording of the flood story from the Bible in Living Sound. Let's take a quick listen to a part of it. Your attention, please! Who is he? I haven't the slightest idea. Ladies, gentlemen, friends, you are come from all parts of the world to witness the wonder of our age. An old man who insists on believing in fables and who laboriously through the years has constructed that (laughs) that ship. Why does he intend to sail it on a sea of grass? There is no body of water nearby. He, this old man, Noah, would have us believe that a sudden flood of water, mind you, is coming upon us. Where is this water to come from? Tears, perhaps. Tears of sorrow. Or tears of laughter at the folly of this old, deluded man. For deluded he most certainly is. And insane. I am the world's greatest scholar. And I say unto you, there cannot be a flood. It is impossible. In all the long history of our world, never has water rained down from the heavens as Noah claims will happen. I say it cannot happen. It is against nature. The laws of nature are so well established that God himself, if there be a God, cannot change them. Good people, friends, be at peace. Fear not. There shall be no flood. The modern hymn, These Things Say the Holy One, speaks of a door that will soon close. I know your works. Behold, I have put before you an open door, which no one can shut. Because you have a little power, have kept my word, have not denied my name. Powerful words. Noah entered the ark by faith. He entered through a door that he could not shut and he could not open. God had to do that. That door is a great symbol of Jesus, our only means of salvation. Jesus said in John 10 verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. People in Noah's time were going about their daily lives all too aware of the violence and sin that filled the earth and the rapid societal changes. They heard Noah preach for 150 years about the coming judgment, and they were not moved to enter the ark. Since 1844, the three angels' message of Revelation 14, the very final message before judgment occurs, has been preached. The first angel reminds the hearers that Christ has entered into the Holy of Holies to atone for our sins. All are called to be obedient to the Ten Commandments, including the Fourth Commandment, which talks about the Seventh-day Sabbath. The second angel cries in a loud voice that Babylon has fallen. His message is to a dying world to come out of Babylon, which is false theological messaging and teachings, so that they can be saved. 
The third angel then cries in a loud voice that anyone that worships the beast or its image, which is the false teachings of the word, as headed by a coalition by the papacy, will receive a mark in their forehead or hand for destruction. And those that receive their mark means that they either agree or follow along with what the ideological and theological practices are, which is contrary to God's plan. This mark is known as the mark of the beast, and it's not a physical mark. It's what we think or do. And all of us will either receive the mark of the beast or the seal of God's approval. Christ is about ready to take off his high priestly robes and put on his robe as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Will you not choose to come out of Babylon? Walk up the ramp of obedience through the door into the ark of Christ Jesus, your only safety. This has been a presentation of Harvest with your host, Dr. Michael John Cookenmaster. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Like, comment, and share. See you next time.